Okay. In this video, I'm going to teach you guys how to draw electron configuration models of atoms. Over here in the top left corner of the screen, I have a periodic table. This periodic table is over on my desk. It will always be right there. You guys can use it for your tests and for your quizzes. For the purposes of homework, the periodic table in your textbook will work just fine. We're going to use this periodic table during this video at several times. All right. First, a little bit of review. Um, the atom is composed of a nucleus, right? And inside the nucleus are protons and neutrons. And around the outside of the nucleus, there are electrons traveling in energy levels. Each of these rings represents a different energy level of electrons. And of all the elements, I think that the largest uh, atom contains like seven energy levels, something like that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven energy levels would be the largest um, atom. We'll never draw any that big in class. In those energy levels of electrons, the electrons travel, you can have two in the first energy level, you can have eight in the second energy level, up to eight. In the third energy level, you can have up to 18 electrons, and the fourth energy level can have up to 32 electrons. The outside energy level, whether it's the first, second, or third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, will never have more than eight electrons in the outer energy level. That's called the valence electron shell. The outer energy level is the valence. It doesn't matter the number, but as long as it's the outer, it's called the valence energy level. Okay? There we go. Now, protons. They have a mass of 1 a m U, atomic mass unit. The neutrons have a mass of 1 a m u. Now, charges, the protons, neutrons, and electrons have electrical charges, and the protons have a one positive charge. The neutrons have a neutral charge. They have no charge. And the electrons, any one electron has a one minus charge, a negative charge. Okay, so one, the charge on one electron would cancel out the charge on one proton and vice versa. All right? So there's a review. Let's draw an atom. We squeeze this down here, put it over there for a second. And we're going to draw, let's draw an atom of hydrogen, most simple of all elements. All right? And the models we're going to be drawing here today are the most common isotopes. And we'll talk more about isotopes in a little bit, uh, maybe in another video. All right, hydrogen is going to have a nucleus, and inside the nucleus are going to be protons and neutrons. It's because it's small, I'm just writing a P and an N. All right, we're going to need the periodic table to be able to tell us the number of protons and neutrons that the hydrogen atom has. All right, so let me bring the periodic table here and we're going to look right over here at the box that contains the hydrogen that's the top left of the periodic table all right that number above the h is the atomic number and that tells you how many protons that the atom has all right so let me squeeze this back down oh let's try not to there we go all right so we're going to put one proton right here, all right? Now, the number of protons always equals the number of electrons. And over here on the side, I'm going to just kind of keep this straight here. Protons, electrons, and neutrons, all right? So we're going to say one proton and always equals the number of electrons, one. So the charges cancel in an atom, all right? 
Um, the And we'll draw the electrons in just a second. Let's get the neutrons. The mass of the atom is in the nucleus. Remember from the previous, from the review picture, the review thingy here, remember here, the mass of a proton is 1 AMU, and the mass of a neutron is 1 AMU. Ooh, forgot to tell you, an electron mass is so small, it's zero AMU. Don't even count it. It's so small. It actually has a mass, but it's so incredibly small that it's not even counted. All the mass of the atom is contained in the nucleus. All right? It's easy to add the mass because you have 10 AMUs. If you had 10 neutrons, you'd have 10 AMUs. You had 10 protons, that's 10 AMUs. So the mass inside the nucleus would be 20 AMU. All right? So let's go back to that hydrogen that we were doing and go to the periodic table right there at underneath the symbol for the hydrogen is the average mass the average mass is the mass of all the isotopes and the mass of the most common isotope is that average mass number rounded to the whole number so you say the mass number is one for hydrogen. I'll show you how we write that in just a second here. Let me squeeze this back down here. Uh, come on now, just a period, come on periodic table, just, yes, we want to, oh, I've got to squeeze it down like this, there we go. All right, got it? So the mass of the hydrogen atom, the most common hydrogen atom is one, and we can write that hydrogen one, like that. Sometimes it's written H, dash one all right that tells you that the mass is one the mass is in the nucleus we already have one proton and that's the one amu for its mass so that means in this isotope of hydrogen there are no neutrons all right now there's one electron we have to put one electron around the outside of the nucleus i'll draw an energy level and boom put an electron all right, I'm going to show you something on the periodic table about that that we really don't need on the hydrogen because the hydrogen is such a small atom. But we will use these rules that I'm pointing out to you now on the periodic table with a larger atom that we're about to do. All right, so here's the periodic table again. Let's look at that hydrogen. Notice that the hydrogen is in the first column which is called a group and it's also in the first row of the periodic table which is called a period now when it's in the first period the first row that tells you that the hydrogen atom is going to have one energy level and the fact that it's in the first group is going to tell you that there's one valence electron that's the outer shell electron. Well, this hydrogen only has one electron. It's, it only has one energy level, so one energy level, one electron, and that energy level is the outside energy level, the valence electron shell. So these rules aren't really needed for the hydrogen, again, because it's so small, but I'll show you here. Let's, we're going to do, let's say, sulfur. We'll do sulfur here next, all right? Let me squeeze this back down. Come on, come on now. There it goes, all right. And I'm going to take and squeeze this hydrogen down here too. And we're going to draw sulfur. All right, so we do sulfur. And I don't like that color, let's go, let's go black here. Sulfur, there we go. All right, we'll go ahead and draw a nucleus for sulfur right there. You can have protons. And neutrons and then let's go to the periodic table and see how many protons sulfur has all right we'll zoom this back over here you'll find sulfur over here on the right side of the periodic table right there all right atomic number is 16 that's going to tell us we have 16 protons and 16 electrons so I'm going to squeeze 
that's there it goes right there so we're gonna have 16 protons and let's go protons is 16 electrons is 16 Neutrons, we'll have to look up here in a second. We're going to go back and find the electrons. I mean the neutrons, I'm sorry. All right, so periodic table, back to the periodic table. And we see that the most common isotope has a mass of 32. That's the mass number. All right, so we're going to take 32 as the most common mass. And that 32 then will be the mass inside the nucleus. Well, 16 protons are already there. So that means we need another 16 neutrons to make the 32 mass of the sulfur atom. All right? So we got 16 neutrons. All right, now we need to know where to place these 16 electrons. We need to know how many energy levels of electrons there are in sulfur. So that's going to take us back to the periodic table. We'll look here, and you see here, sulfur is in period number three, right there, right? So that means sulfur is going to have three energy levels. And notice that sulfur is in the 16th group. Now, the way this periodic table is organized, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, the ones digit in that number tells you how many valence electrons that the atom has. So in group 16, you have six valence electrons. And again, we went back to the periodic table to see what period it was in. It tells us we have three energy levels. And group 16 says we have six valence electrons. All right, so let's move this away. And let's go back here to the sulfur atom all right we need three energy levels of electrons one two and three remember we were in group 16 sulfur was so that tells us we're going to have six valence electrons i'm going to go one at the top the side the bottom the other side the top again to make a pair and over here to make a pair. Electrons actually travel. If they can, they can travel in pairs called orbitals. All right, you'll learn a whole lot more about that and how that all works when you get to chemistry in 10th grade. Right now, for our purposes, you can fill your valence shell just like I showed you there. All right, so we got six valence electrons. Now that first energy level, remember I told you, is always gonna hold two, so we'll put two electrons on the first energy level so how many electrons have we drawn so far? We've got two on the first and six in the valence shell, that's eight. That means we need eight more to get that 16 electrons on the atom. We're gonna put those eight electrons on the second energy level. And if you'll recall from our little review there at the beginning, the second energy level only holds eight electrons. So there we go, there's a model an electron configuration model of a sulfur atom. We showed an electron configuration model of a hydrogen atom. And any other atom that you guys would be asked to draw, you would follow exact same rules and exact same procedures in order to draw that model that I ask you. All right, so you could go at it, start that worksheet through the first part of that worksheet and use the periodic table in your book or the periodic table over on my desk to do that. Thank you very much.